camellia that we see here is a Chanel camellia, a beautiful specimen in linen and cotton made in France. Let's see how it fits. Um, now, I've worn a particularly difficult shirt on purpose. Difficult, why? Because it doesn't have a collar, or rather it has this low cut collar, but there's no collar kind of folded, you know. And also, I'm not wearing a jacket. It's easier to pull off these camellias, not to pull them off of something, but it's easier to wear them on a revers lapel of a jacket. But since it's really hot and most of the time with climate change and unfortunately global warming, and yes, it's a fact, it exists and it's really happening and who doesn't believe it is a total idiot. And it's just gonna burn to a crisp underneath the sun sooner or later. The rest of us are kind of given up on jackets altogether, more or less. Of course, in the depths of winter in some parts of the world, we will still be wearing those jackets. But guess what? If I'm going to wear a real winter jacket, chances are I ain't going to be putting a summerly looking camellia on it. So I like to wear the camellias personally, either on very light sweaters or shirts. So let's use this as an example of the most complicated shirt in terms of camellia, because the camellia really looks good if you put it on a uh, on the collar, which we don't have here. So how do we do it? I like to have the two leaves. Some of the Chanel camellias do not come with the two leaves. They would just come as flowers. The bigger ones usually are. The smaller ones usually come with the two leaves, or the extra petals if you want, but these are more like leaves. Facing upwards. You could make them face downwards if you want as well but usually upwards. And usually this would be the position, right? So if our hearts are somewhere there, they're not really to the side, they're more kind of central in this area, it would go opposite of that in this area here. That's where I would usually place the camellia. But what I like to do very much is, so as high as possible, but not, not too high on the shoulder. You don't want it to go over the shoulder, especially Another thing that's very important, if you're wearing a bag, a chain over the shoulder, you don't want to break the camellia because you forget that you have a brooch, a camellia or any brooch in general, and you just put the strap of the bag on top. Big no-go, right? So if you're gonna wear brooches in general in this area of the body, you might as well either just wear them to one side and then always remember the bag strap only on the other and don't make a mistake to flip it. It can happen that you kind of go out of the house thinking, yes, okay, I will only wear the bag here, but then all of a sudden you kind of switch to this side. So think about which one of the two shoulders is the shoulder you naturally would put the strap of your bag onto. Now, if you're wearing a backpack and you always wear both straps of the backpack on, it's a problem. If you're the type of person who wears only one strap of the backpack on, then you will also have a preferred shoulder. Same applies to when we're standing for a longer period of time. We tend to lean only on one of the two legs, either the left or the right. We're either left-handed or right-handed. Some of us are, some of us can use both hands, right? But anyway, that's another story. So you have to always kind of think about that. That also has to help you decide on which side, left or right, to wear your camellia brooch. Um, in my case, tricky, because I kind of flip the bag a lot. Usually I would wear it on this side, but I prefer to wear brooches on this side as well. So if I wear a brooch, I tend to take a bag that's more of a clutch that doesn't have a strap, or I just don't use the strap and I hold the bag in my hand. That's basically my solution to this predicament. Anyway, the petals facing upwards, and this is more or less the height I like it at. But however, I do like to experiment as well, and when I do, this particular collar is very interesting because it can help us experiment and place the camellia here. And I like to have a part of the flower off the collar, close to the neck or almost on the neck, and the other part of the camellia underneath. So I'm hoping it's not going to fall off. I'm just for show purposes. Just want to put it there, there. This looks kind of awkward in the beginning, but you can get used to it. And um, it does look really, in there, there she goes. Okay, we're gonna have to put it on for real. 
which I wanted to avoid because, as you see, it takes a long time. And I don't see what I'm doing. Another thing I tend to do is I would place the camellia before I put the shirt on. Because then you can maneuver putting on the brooch in the position you want it, and then you put on the garment. Because you see, if you're putting it on now, it's, it's just a mess. It's really hard. Now I don't know where the hole is again. Oh, this is so frustrating, you guys. So frustrating. Ah, okay, I found it. Okay. Now this is. I'm stepping away, so you but then you can't hear me really well, very well. The microphone is on the camera. But anyway, this is kind of the proportions you get if you place it in this position, and this is very unusual. And most people are not going to place it there, or are also not going to suggest to place it there. But. I like, in particular, and this is one of the reasons why I was really happy when Chanel came out with a beige, very organic looking, linen-y type of camellia, because it kind of blends in with my particular skin tone. Um, but thank, you know, goodness, we have these camellias in all sorts of tones, so you could, you could match your skin tone as well, from light to dark, from pink, purple, yellow, black, brown, violet, green, whatever have you. Chanel has you covered. And I like the fact that it kind of blends in with, with you. And it almost becomes an extension of yourself. It's kind of a unity between, you know, this particular Chanel piece, which is a flower, it's supposed to be organic, and the organic aspect of the body. So to me, um, the aesthetic of having the camellia so close, or almost like touching your neck, is, it's kind of very poetic. It's a poetic gesture, and I think it's really beautiful. I don't feel it's cramped or clogging you up as long as you don't overdo it with um, other jewelry pieces or accessories or costume jewelry or what have you. Minimal. In this case, no earrings. There is no um, necklace. Obviously, you, you can't because it would kind of risk to damage the uh, camellia. I wanted to say gardenia. Sometimes Chanel does make gardenia flowers as well, but this is a camellia. Um, just glasses and this, very simple. And then I have a bracelet. So we got the rule of three in this case. One, two, three accessories and that's it. Michael Myers, yes. <laughs> this is a really tacky edition. I just love Michael Myers so much and the entire Halloween franchise. So I would wear these kind of netty, semi-translucent um, shirts and then a t-shirt with like a Michael Myers print underneath. <laughs> So this is a very strange juxtaposition of things and a clash of styles, which I particularly love. So there's a little bit of goth in there, there's a little bit of horror, there's a little bit of, of Chanel heritage in there. Um, there's a little bit of geek and nerd through the glasses. And there's a little bit of Yoji Yamamoto, this shirt is a, it's a Y3 slash Yamamoto shirt. There's a bit of that Japanese meditational reverence in there as well. Um, Let me just say one thing about Michael Myers. There's a silence to him. He never talks. He's always cool, calm, and collected. So as terrible as the deaths are, because he perpetrates them upon others, there's a sophistication to it as well. Now you have to transcend the mere aspect of horror to understand the, 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 the aesthetic and the reasoning behind a portrayal of a character such as Michael Myers. But what I want to say is, if this looks like a clash at first glance. If you dig a bit deeper, you understand that it, it's not. Um, Michael Myers does fit, in many ways, uh, a Shintoist mentality or religion, if you want, a type of meditational uh, aesthetic uh, that Japan has, but it also fits a, a soberness uh, or a sobriety um, that a classic Coco Chanel, when she was still alive, represented. So it all, I, I think these things through. Now, of course, when just a mere stranger does not anything about me, does not anything about all these elements, but in depth, but then sees them together, is going to think, this looks crazy. But to me, it makes total sense. Go figure. That's Jacob for you, guys. So anyway, back to you, Jacob, in the studio. Ho. Check this little beauty out, if you ever get a chance. I mean, 
after sales, I don't even know what they do. At a certain point, they do send them all back. <laughs> what doesn't sell gets sent back. And then they probably do their, I don't know, uh, staff sales or giveaways or whatever they do to special people and co-workers. And after that, yes, Chanel is one of those brands that does destroy whatever is left over. It's terrible, but they do that to keep um, the covetability, collectability, and at the end of the day, price of their products very high and in demand. So, um, I hope you've liked this unboxing slash review, and I shall see you all very soon in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please do thumb it up. And if you haven't already but wish to, consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm also on Patreon. If you wish to see special exclusive videos or previews there, you can also go there. Super Dacob, all spelled together. So, for now, I say goodbye and never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.